Hello and welcome. Welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps, and you are joining me today for ep episode 85 of Paper Crafting Playdate. And I'm so thrilled that you are joining me today. In real time, today it is March 10th, 2023. And whether you're watching this uh, live with me and joining in the conversation live, or you are going to watch this later at some point, I am just really happy that you're here and thankful and that you're joining me. So we are going to do some paper crafting today. Are you ready for this? Uh, I think I am. I've had my two plus cups of coffee today. And uh, yeah, I think I'm ready. So let's see who is here. I'm also going to show you the table here. I have some cards to share, so I'm really excited about. You guys are awesome. I love the comments. I love to participate in the comments um, as much as I can during my presentation, but definitely after when I have my full focus. So please, if you're brand new, definitely tell me where you're from so I can um, get to know you and say hi. And I love to know what you're working on, um, what kind of crafty thing you have going. And that makes me so happy to know there are crafters all over the world doing paper crafty things, um, especially on this Friday in March. Let's, I'm going to just take a minute and say hi, Nydia. Hi, Sue. Hi, Mary. Hi, Suzanne. Sarah, Jana, Susie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Faye and Judy and Evelyn. Hi, Kelly. I'm glad you're here for the first time, Kelly. Awesome. And Kathy. Kathy's in Florida today instead of Hawaii. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hi, Luann. <laughs> it's great to have you. All right, let me show you some fun cards uh, I received. This is from one of my team members, Anne. She made this little thank you note for me, and she used uh, the little whimsical strips um, template. It's one of the templates that you can uh, get for free when you join my email list. It's a nice, easy little template. Thank you, Anne. That was very sweet to send me that card. And this is from Cheryl Sorensen. She is another fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And she lives here um, nearby. We had lunch this week and she gave me this card. Isn't that pretty? That's that Around the Bend gorgeous, gorgeous bundle. Thank you, Cheryl. And this one is from Wanda. She lives in Michigan and she is also a fellow demonstrator. And she already has her, well, I guess it's next week, but St. Patrick's Day cards out. This is the first one that I've received. Look how cute the inside is. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. I love getting cards in the mail, don't you? Have to remember to send those gorgeous cards you make and um, not just keep them and look at them. That's why I always make about two of everything I make. That way I can um, gaze at my creation just a little bit longer. So, I don't have many announcements today, yay, but I want to just uh, remind you, or if you're joining for the first time and you don't know what a hostess code is, this crazy little sequence right here is a hostess code. And uh, when you order from a demonstrator, if they have a code for the month or the week or whatever, this code helps them collect orders into a hostess order so that they can get rewards, right? And so what I do with my rewards each month is then I um, use those rewards that I earn to purchase things um, that I give back to anybody who orders over $50 and uses this code, all right? So you get a little gift for me. This is the card making kit that you're going to get um, once March is over. It's using some exclusive hostess designer series paper with all these fun, amazing spring colors. And so you get those papers, embellishments, and card bases, and some ribbon, and then this fun little box to put them in. So that's my reward. If you ever have any questions about how to order uh, catalogs, anything like that, just email me. All the information to contact me is in the description box, which I never, ever remember to tell people. 
the other thing I wanted to remind you is that um, this is the second to last month that both of these catalogs are going to be current. So the mini catalog started in January, ends at the end of April. This big catalog started last May, and it's going to be done at the end of April, too. So what that means is we've got brand new goodness coming our way, which is super exciting. Also means that there's going to be a bunch of products that are going to be retiring, and we'll probably find out at the end of March what um, stamp sets, supplies, tools, inks, all that good stuff will be going away um, and retiring. Um, and then starting in May, we'll have a brand new big catalog. So just stay up to date on that information so you don't miss out on getting anything that you might want. All right, so today, I don't think I told you what we're doing today. Today, today we are going to make um, a layout for a card front, and it is kind of quilt, quilty-esque, I guess. It reminds me of a quilt, so that's kind of what I'm seeing in my vision. And when I saw this idea on Pinterest, let me show you a picture. I printed out a picture. This was the card that I saw on Pinterest. This was made by Christy Marcotte, and I believe the best things in life are pink, is her um, blog. That's her, what am I trying to say? That's how you reach her. The best things in life are pink. You can look her up. Anyway, this is um, a dye that creates these fun little um, spaces. And I think it's from Whimsy Stamps. But I saw this and I just immediately saw like a quilt pattern. And so I wanted to reproduce it um, without it being a die. So I contacted all of my quilt experts that I know. Um, first of all, I chatted with my mom and uh, asked her about, I showed her a picture. So what do you think? What do you think? Then I contacted uh, Julie Heights, um, who is a card quilter extraordinaire. And then I contacted my team member and demonstrator friend, Sue Sheets. All right, so all of these ladies gave me amazing advice. They are my quilting heroes. So my mom kind of thought that this, because uh, my question was, because I am not a quilter, but I love I love the world of quilting. I love to um, make faux quilting with cards when I can. Um, and I appreciate and value the work that goes into a quilt um, because of my mom, right? So I just wanted to get their um, opinions on what you might call this sort of design um, if it were a block in quilting. And so my mom gave me the suggestion of saying... It's kind of like, she said, anytime you cut things kind of at those funky angles, it's kind of like a crazy quilt, which is absolutely accurate. And she said it also reminded her of a quilt square she saw called stained glass. <laughs> Judy, do you like my word, quilt-esque? <laughs> Thank you for spelling it out. I was trying to figure out how that would be spelled, and now I know. Thank you. <laughs> and then when I showed, it to, showed the picture to um, Sue... She said it looked like a staggered four square, which I was like, oh, that's cool. I like that. And then when I talked to Julie about it, um, she said it reminded her of a square that could be kind of like an attic window. So definitely the theme of window um, was in all of these ideas, right? And so when I looked up the actual dye that made that, it was called uh, Wonky Window. And so I am calling this pattern Wonky Window Paint. Now, you need to go visit both Julie and Sue on Facebook because uh, they both do amazing things with cards. Um, Julie does all kinds of quilty cards. If you love quilts, Oh my goodness. So this is her, the Chirpy Card Maker of Quilts. And then she has a group on Facebook called Quilt Cards and more. Sue Sheets is called Stampin' with Sushi. And she, if you love step-by-step -step, um, and making along with a demonstrator, Sue's your girl. She um, posts 
every week something new um, and it's really, really fun to watch her. My mom, you can't contact. She's not, um, she's not on social media. So if you, if you need her, you're gonna have to go through me. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna start with our pattern. So let me show you what I have here. So this is our wonky window pane. And here's how it goes together. So these are the pieces that you need. This would be designer series paper, and this would be the cardstock that you're gonna layer it on. So let me just show you with a piece that's the size of your designer series paper. And this is just copy paper, but I just wanna show you how easy this is. So this is three and a half, sorry, three and a fourth, three and one fourth by four and a half. And you're going to measure from the top left corner and the bottom right corner. And so you're gonna measure two inches from that top right corner across the top. And then you're going to measure down along the side at one and a half inches. Okay, so there's your two marks there. So from the top left corner, you're gonna measure two inches along the top, one and a half inches down. Then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the bottom right corner, just in opposite, right? So you're gonna go two inches along the bottom and then one and a half inches up like that. Let's see if you can even see what I did there. All right, that's, so along the sides, it's one and a half up and down along the top and the bottom, it's two inches. Once you do this one time, like with so many patterns, you don't really have to measure anymore. You can just kind of eyeball it. So to make it a wonky window pane, you're gonna cut in between the marks that match. So the two inch marks, you draw a line, and the two one and a half inch marks. And essentially what this gives you is four quadrilang quadrilateral <laughs> quadrilaterals, um, different, you know, shapes. And then you would cut them by lining up that line between, here, let me take that away. There we go. You're gonna cut, you're gonna lay those marks along your cutting line and you're gonna cut on those lines that you drew. And you're gonna hold your pieces together and turn it that way. So let's do it in real life with a real piece of paper. So I have a piece from the Regency Park and I'm not gonna measure because this is what I want you to do, right? I want you to just kind of eyeball it. But I'm going two inches from here, two inches from here. I'm gonna line those up, cut like that. And then I'm just gonna take these pieces, hold them together and turn it. And I'm gonna think one and a half inches down, one and a half inches up like that. Okay, so I'll show you this again. Here's my little cheat sheet. See how pretty close I am? You can just really, once you do it a few times, eyeball it. Okay, and as long as your pieces are together, it doesn't have to be exact. Those measurements are to just give you, you know, the starting point. Okay, so here's our pieces. And now let's put them together. If your pieces get off, like mine just did, okay, what you do is you look for the right angle because there's only one right angle or corner for every piece. So if you happen to drop them after you cut them, just find the right angles. And you can always, if your eyes don't automatically realize what a right angle is, just find something that's square and then you'll you'll be able to tell which one is the right angle angle. 
Okay, so our card is going to be, uh, our card base is going to be Soft Succulent. And then the piece that we're going to mount our wonky window pane on, our cardstock piece, which is four by five and a fourth. So it's actually like a half inch bigger than this piece, wider and longer. Okay. I'm going to use this um, textured shimmer paper that coordinates with this um, suite of products. Now I feel like this paper, like I wouldn't necessarily put the um, succulent together with the shaded spruce, but when I pick up this designer series paper, let's see if I can zoom in on it. I don't, it's not focusing, but the little leaves in this paper really look like soft succulent, even though that isn't a color in this paper. So when you put this together, you're going to want to leave a quarter inch around the edges. And so again, you're going to just focus on the corners. Don't look at all the angles. Or at least that's how I had to do it. I thought, you know, without, so I didn't confuse myself. Okay. So there's one. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see this closer. So here's my right angle. So I'm going to focus on that corner to make sure that I have about a quarter inch and straighten it that way. I'm not going to look at this line, right? And we're going to go down here. This is the piece that I always turn and then I'm like, wait, where, <laughs> where it? So you got to just remember to look for the right angles. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure I'm on the same line and do the same thing here. put this on our card base. Okay interesting right so this is just really creating a backdrop for your focal point so let's make our focal point with a greeting and some flowers i'm going to use the pieces in this petal park bundle and i'm going to bring out blue flowers since those, maybe there's a lot of yellow there and then those, the blue flowers are smaller. So I'm going to focus on the blue flowers. And navy blue is what all of these flowers are, like the outline of them are navy blue. So I'm gonna do the same with my stamp and then the inside will be a balmy blue. I'm going to punch these out, so I'm going to just pay attention here. Two-step stamps are nice because you just get a lot of features, a lot of um, details in the images, but they're easy to use. And this particular one's nice because the stamps 
um, are all hooked together. They, they work with the punch. So you, it makes it easy. So I'm just looking through my stamp to line that up as best that I can. If you wanted it perfect, you could use your Stamparatus. But that turned out okay. This one's nice. I've done it both ways. You can stamp the solid image first and then put the detail over that. Or you can do it like I just did it where I did the detailed outline first and then I put the inside in. And either way um, works really well. I need to take this corner off so it will fit in the punch. Then you just line it up and punch it out. And then you find where the flowers flew to. Okay, so there's the flowers and now we'll make some leaves. with our soft succulent. Okay, I'm gonna do the outline again in navy and then fill in with soft succulent. Okay. All right, so this is a nice um, example. This stamp set is a nice example of like a product suite um, that Stampin' Up! puts together to make life easier. So there are two like companion stamp sets that have images that coordinate together. So you can get them um, separately or you can get, you know, add them together if you really like the paper, the images and all that good stuff. Um, and then you've got all kinds of things, you know, that already coordinate together. You really don't have to think of anything. So this Petal Park is bundled with the punch. Sentimental Park is bundled with a die set. Again, even if you didn't get the punch or the dies you, with just these stamp sets, that would be great to have all those together. So I'm gonna pick out the love and the you from this stamp set here. And we're just gonna create a little our greeting. So I'm going to do you in balmy blue like the flowers. And then we'll do love. And I'm just going to overlap a tiny bit with the, the you there. Okay, so because this is just like kind of a backdrop, you can put your greeting anywhere you want. But what I've found is nice is if you add it somewhere where you're still going to be able to see the beginning and end of like what would actually be the window pane in between those um, funky rectangles. I'm going to trim this and give it a nice little flag. A 
reusing paper here. <laughs> I think I printed, I printed some bookmarks on the back of some of my basic white and didn't need them. So using the other side. All right, let's see. I think I do like it up here. I'm gonna put this one up here like that. And then we'll put our flowers around. All right, is anybody else a quilter out there that has, um, you know, played with something like this? John is asking, has anyone tried the flying seagull fold? I I saw somebody make that into a card and I thought, whoa. <laughs> that is a fun, that is a, definitely a fun fold. Marge is a quilter. Just tuck in those leaves in between. We'll do that way. Okay, so that card is basically done. I think we'll add some a little bit of yellow back in there with our sequins. All right, so that is the basic version of the wonky window pane. Let me put these stamps back and then we'll, we'll step this up a little bit. Here's another version with a very similar piece of designer series paper from the same pack of paper. So the only thing that's different and something else that you can do is you can send the whole little card front quarter through an embossing folder through your um, stamp and cut and emboss machine and just kind of quilt those um, designer, series paper, designer series paper little sections right into the cardstock color. Another thing that you can do and um, I have these other dimensions here. So again, this is the piece of cardstock that you mount those wonky um, quadrilaterals onto. If you want to have a smaller space in between the shapes, then you make this cardstock smaller. So here are some other sizes that you could cut this down to instead of using four by five, five and a half. So here's an example. Um, this one I used the three and three fourths inch by five. Instead of using a solid color, I was kind of imagining uh, calicos, right? And how you would maybe put a small, smaller calico print in between as your, your seam binding in between squares. 
And so this is what it looks like if you make a slightly smaller piece here, then your margins in between are smaller. I agree, Cheryl, the embossing for me when I, when you emboss like, well, this is my favorite thing to do. So I say this every single time I do it, but um, it always just that added texture and dimension with the designer series paper makes me so, so happy. Now, if you are worried about lining these squares up, the other thing that you could do, let's go back to this first card here. I cut a piece that is exactly the size of what this space is going to be once you separate them, which is very easy you know, to figure out. So you could do that and pick, um, choose a piece of paper that's exactly the same as this base here, and then mount those squares on here, and then add it to the, the front of the card. And that way you'll still have this connected color in your um, seams or your margins here, um, but you would have you would have these corners to mount things to. Do you know what I mean? So you wouldn't have to stress about getting it straight. So that works as well. All right, so let's talk about. adding another element. So I'm going to put these to the side here and show you this one. So again, this is one with all of the squares. Um, I'm going to say squares, but you, obviously they're not squares. The same, but instead of putting it on this piece of cardstock, I did a little, I did homework. Um, you'll be very proud of me, I did homework. And figured out that these three die set, four die sets, um, the largest die in all of these die sets is about the same size as a trimmed quarter, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. Because if you have dies, then this is you can do so many things, right? <clears throat> Let's take, move that out of the way. For, so this is the size that fits our pattern. So if you have the stitched rectangle dies, the second, or sorry, the largest one, the largest one is about the same size as this. If you have the deckled rectangle dies, the largest one is the same size. Now, when I measured them exactly, they are more the size of this. Okay, so in place of using this full piece, um, it's going to be this option right here. And then the brand new radiating stitches dies is just about the same size. This is um, the exact size of it, but it's, it's really close, really close to the same size. So that's my point being, you can mount these onto any of these um, including the scalloped contour dies, and then you have a, a extra special, um, pretty um, and detailed little piece that you can mount that window, wonky window pane on. All right, so I've played with a lot of these. Um, I'm gonna zoom out for a second so you can see this whole page here. There we go. These are a brand new set of dies called Radiating Stitches. They're only online. They're an online exclusive. 
And so I, I just figured out what would fit inside um, so that we could play around with this um, layout and maybe incorporate these dies as well. So I'm going to show you that in a minute, but I want you to just see that um, all of these larger dies from the stitched rectangles, the deckled rectangles, the scallop contour, they're all the size, um, same size as this, essentially. So you've got a lot of choices if you have these die sets. All right, so the next card We are going to make another wonky window pane and we're going to mount it on a deckled rectangle. Sorry, let's zoom in again. And this time we're going to actually kind of make it look like a window um, and have the piece that's behind there actually be a scene. All right, this was something Julie suggested to me and I thought, yes, absolutely, let's do that. So let's cut this piece. So this is three and a fourth by four and a half. And we're going to just cut that. Okay, two inches, two inches from there. And we're gonna turn it. And we're gonna think about one and a half inches to one and a half inches. Okay, so remember this piece, this is the largest, well, let me make sure I'm saying that right. the largest deckled rectangle, which is similar to this. It's more like this size right here. So we're going to mount, um, actually, what did I do? We're going to mount them on the white first, and then we're gonna put them on the pink. That way it looks like we have kind of a white window pane. So I just, I've been um, making a, a bunch of these this morning and I kind of like to just set it out there on first. That way I can kind of in my mind see what the margin's gonna be before I start to glue. Does anybody have an engineer husband that would uh, have to get out something, some kind of tool to make this straight? Or maybe you're an engineer and this would require you to, to measure. <laughs> Okay, so again, I'm, I'm looking for that outside, those corners is what I'm, I'm using it to line up. And when you do that, these automatically become the same size. So this piece of paper is from the Enjoy the Journey designer series paper. And this is a piece of Mango Melody. And we'll attach 
attach that to the front. So now you can kind of see, see it like it is maybe a window and you're looking at it from the side, right? Let's make another little greeting here. I love this life is better with you. take our special little happy label punch. This is a bundle, these greetings in this bundle set. So this is a three fourths inch strip which fits perfectly in the little slots along with a one inch and a half inch. And I'm gonna use the little ticket end. I think I'm gonna just use the ticket end on one side and then line the other end up over here. But let's add a little bit of mango to our edge of our Um, our greeting just to make it stand out a little bit. Okay, life is better with you. These champagne rhinestones are probably my top three um, embellishment. because they kind of have like a brownish pink tone to them. And they work with so many different colors. It's amazing to me. They look great with pink and brown, obviously, but I mean, this is picking up kind of the orangey, um, pinky tones with a darker pink as well. Hello, bunny. Thank you. Okay, so very simple, but this is like actually uh, putting a scene behind the wonky window pane. And there's actually quite a few papers um, where there are scenes. This is the Delicate Desert 12 by 12 paper. I haven't had a chance to play with that yet. I ran out of time. And then by the bay, I can't wait to make a little window with this little water sky piece. But I did, well, here's another one from the Enjoy the Journey and I made a darker window pane there. Similar layout, similar um, using the deckled rectangle. And then I played with Happy forest friends, I had to think for a minute, and did this little scene outside the window.
So that's another way you can use this designer series paper and this kind of layout idea. All right, so let's just go back for a second to our, our new radiating stitches. And let's just kind of do some comparing with all these pieces. Let's see. So there's a, a large, a medium, and a small size of these radiating stitches, and they all nest together. So you could use them together for like a triple layer. You can make frames out of them by mounting one die over the other and cutting it, and you would have, um, you would cut out the inside of another one and then have this piece to take away. But these also work with the other sizes. So if you want to, so here's, this is part of my homework here. This is like, <clears throat> If you've got kids or, you know, a spouse or somebody and you're, you know, you need to just pull away for a little bit, um, just start calling your um, crafting time that you need to make some homework. Um, it just flies a little better than I'm going to go make some cards. Um, so you really need to do a little research. <laughs> you have to uh, spend some time figuring out measuring and doing things like that. But do you see how the second size of the second largest rectangle stitched and deckled, how they layer on top of the largest radiating rectangle. And so this is a lot of ways to just make these um, come together really, really beautifully. Here's the largest, I'm sorry, second largest scalloped contour. Look how pretty that is next to those. Wendy, you're asking about um, if you did that cut of the wonky window pane on a real photograph, I think that would look amazing. I think that would be beautiful. All right, so take some time. I'm just gonna encourage you to whatever dies you have in the shapes, cut out like a play set for yourself. So if you haven't done that already, so that you can figure out what things layer together and how you might want to use them. So here's the, the number four rectangle stitched inside of that. It's a lot of fun. And then once you do the work, the homework, then you have all of this that you don't have to rethink again. <laughs> That's really important for me. Um, sometimes if, if I don't do the homework, then I don't. Um, it's frustrating and when you want to create something quickly and you don't have that information, you have to remeasure everything. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit there. These um, are scanned and they'll there'll be a PDF, um, individual PDF. So if you want to use my measurements um, as a reference, you can use these as a reference. Okay, so this project also lends itself to a stack, cut, and shuffle. And so let's see how that works. And let's resize it a little bit. So I picked out our perfectly penciled paper. I picked out two pieces that were kind of a um, little bit darker and then two that had a white background. And I'm going to layer them every other one. So instead of cutting it three and a fourth by four and a half. That's what we've been doing so far. I trimmed it down to two and three fourths by four. So I basically took a half inch off to make it smaller. 
And I did that so that we can mount our finished products using some of these frames. Okay, I'm gonna make some room here. Here's the stitched. So this is the, um, I'm going to mount this on a stitched rectangle. So let's do the cut with four pieces and do a quick stack, cut, and shuffle. If you haven't done one of those before, there's lots and lots of videos out there and I have a couple. All right, so you're gonna do the same thing, only with a slightly smaller piece, you're gonna make those measurements a little smaller. And so I did one and three fourths inch instead of two, and then I did the same half inch across. And you want them to be all stacked together especially if you're gonna eyeball it. Okay, we're gonna turn that and do one and a half, one and a half. Okay, so now we've got four piles, four pieces in each pile. So you need the number of papers matching how many sections you're going to have. And then you shuffle each stack. So the first one is as is, I guess no shuffle. One you don't shuffle, the rest of them you shuffle. So one you shuffle once, this one you shuffle twice, and shuffle just means you take the piece of paper and you move it to the back. And then this one, so once, twice, three times, the object being two, three, to get all four papers showing on your piles. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna cut out the stitched rectangle. I'm just going to do this off camera here so I don't mess up my piles. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm going to take the white piece, a little bit larger, and I'm going to do this radiating stitched frame. and cut that out as well. Whew. Okay, so this is the second rect second largest, nope, I'm telling you wrong. This is the third largest rectangle and then the radiating frames, stitches, radiating. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna glue the top layer first. And this is really easy to line up because um, it's a little bit smaller. There's not as much of a, a margin. It's gonna be a tiny little seam, seam in between. Okay, that would be our first one, then we would do this three more times. I'm just gonna do it one time so you can see how, how it goes together. Process of gluing is the same.
I just love black and white. Isn't that pretty? You could just give it to somebody just like this. It doesn't even need a greeting and it would be like, wow, thank you. It's so pretty, it's just so striking. All right, so this one to me is a little bit like, um, a little bit like a quilt because we've got the stitched edge around the rectangle and then we've got these radiating stitches too. So that's going to be the front of the card. <clears throat> and I'm going to let you choose here. So I have a white card base. Like that. Or I have a gray card base. All right, can you help me? Decide which one you would like. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna take these three little pieces that are left and I'm going to cut out a little focal point to finish off our card. So I'm gonna do um, a little light gray, smoky slate heart in the white circle for a greeting and then use basic black for the tiny, the tiny little circle. So white card base or gray. Look at these gorgeous little stitched circles. They're just perfect. Whoops. <laughs> you can't find your paper piercer. There you go. You can kind of do a little bouncing with your die and the paper will usually pop right out. All right, I see gray, 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 gray. For the most part, I think we're gonna do gray. Thank you. So this is basic gray. This is smoky slate. So we really just have a nice monochromatic card. And then we'll create a little focal point with these guys. I went looking for smaller sayings that would fit on this um, circle. The circle is actually one and seven sixteenths. So it's almost one and a half inches. But then you have these stitches, um, you know, that come in from the side perpendicularly. So there's not a lot of room to stamp on it. But I did find this, um, these little words in this conversation bubble set work. So we're going to do just a note. I'm going to do it off to the side. And then I'm going to layer the heart and the black circle. I'm gonna use a glue dot because I was putting glue on it earlier. And these radiating stitches actually cut all the way through. It's not just embossing, they, they cut all the way through. So when you use the liquid glue with the stamp set, sometimes uh, depending on how heavy of a gluer you are, the glue will seep up through those stitches. Okay, so I'm just gonna layer those together like that. And Use some black and white gingham ribbon. Now oh, I wish this was a button, right? You could punch little holes in there and make it look like a button. But I feel like we need buttons since we have some little, a lot of stitched stuff. Just put a little piece right there and we'll say it is a button.
What's going to happen if this ribbon retires? Does somebody have a have a six-step program that I can join if um, that gingham goes away and I have to create without it? <clears throat> So we'll just pop this up. I love this, um, you know, as you've seen, you can really put this anywhere. Even in the middle looks really cute. You can still kind of see the, um, you know, the lines of the window pane. I, I think that when you kind of layer it off um, one of the corners, it does look really good. So I'm going to put it on one of the two that are darker just so this, this is what I want to, to pop. Yes, Lynn, we will cry. Well, you don't have to cry. You can stock up on it and you still use it, right? And I can still use it too, but it's it, I can't really show it if I can't sell it. All right, so here's our monochromatic. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. I don't want to joke about it either. I really wasn't joking. I'm, I'm seriously having visions of sadness. So let me show you. Here's the rest. I already made a set to play with. Wouldn't this be just the sweetest little um, gift set to give somebody or, you know, separately, obviously they just make great, great little quilty cards and you can do four cards at once. I will save these pieces and finish those. And I'm gonna have to send a card to each of my quilty uh, consultants, thank you so much for your help with my wonky window pane. So here's another set of the stack cut and shuffle technique using different papers. So this is... Um, Pretty Prints designer series paper. When I saw these, I immediately thought of Amish quilts and I can't really look at it any other way with those colors. Um, so I gravitated to that. This is back to the very first version um, that I created for you where the paper was cut three and a fourth by four and a half. We've got this nice wide window pane on there and then embossed with that brand new set of embossing folders. This is the one that kind of looks like stars or starfish. So I really loved how those turned out. So this is another version um, that I tried first, similar to this one. And instead of the stitched rectangle, I used the deckled rectangle and I cut out my window pane. I had made it a little bit bigger and then I cut it out. Um, and it's okay. I love this paper, but I wasn't sure. I didn't really love this edge as much, but I did like that little heart right in the middle, little stitched heart. And then when I got really sleepy last night, I decided um, I was looking at that radiating dies, stitched dies big one, and I was like, you know, all these little lines, like you could weave something in there. And so I did, I did once, I probably would never do it again, but I wove the, um, the little sparkly turquoise ribbon in between all those little stitches. And I thought this, this reminded me of like a little girl's um, bedspread um, with the ribbon on it. And so I'm gonna have to find just the right person to send this to with our little in color hearts and circles. All right, what do you think about the wonky window pane? <laughs> let's look at our cards and then let's do a little chatting. So we have our stack cut and shuffle versions. 
We have our basic versions with different sizes. And then we have our actual looking out the window pane versions. There you go. Do you have a have a favorite? The black and white set is my favorite. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Jana. Janice embossing is my favorite too, uh, when I emboss those for sure. Hi, Elaine. Oh, Elaine, if you are into quilt cards, you probably, did you catch this in the beginning? You need to, um, I have a couple videos on quilt cards, but uh, Julie Heights, the chirpy card maker of quilts, she does all quilty cards. Now I'm trying to find her little, hold on. Here it is. Uh, please go check her out and stalk her. <laughs> uh, she does amazing things. She makes quilt cards every week, every week. And um, Sue, she helped me with this. She's a quilter. She does some quilty things too, but she does all kinds of tutorials that are awesome. So definitely go check those ladies out. All right. You like the black and white, black and white. Thank you, Marsha. Hi, Beth. Hi, Susan. Hi, Karen from Iowa. Yay to Julie Heights. I agree. I agree. She's amazing. So she and I just talked about doing a class together. So we are going to come up with something uh, very soon. All right, you guys. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to try a wonky window pane card. Um, get out some of your favorite papers. Try a simple version and then see what you can do to step it up and tie in some of the dies that you have. Um, and I would love to see what you create. I have a Facebook group called Robin's Really Super Stampers on Facebook. You can um, join that group and share what you make. I would love to see it. So thank you so very much. I appreciate